Celebrities have long been trying to extend their rather comfortable lives both through emerging new biotechnologies and simply having a healthy lifestyle. The first of which has lately become a lot more prominent with more and more celebrities publicly admitting of either taking part or even directly funding new research in the field of longevity. Now, the Marvel superhero actor, Chris Hemsworth is bringing the mainstream appeal of longevity to the next level. In a new teaser for his upcoming National Geographic series, Limitless, which will stream on Disney+, Plus, Chris Hemsworth is on a journey to turn back the clock. Hemsworth trains for six astonishing challenges in the series, illustrating how to combat aging at every stage of life and teaching viewers how to live healthier, wiser, and longer lives. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you this new one-of-a-kind series, what it is going to be about exactly, and finally, what longevity becoming mainstream could mean for that field and society itself. Hemsworth will meet leading longevity scientists who believe that the key to staying young is to reverse the aging process before it begins, while the Thor actor confronts his own mortality by testing methods to extend his own life through challenges designed to stretch his physical and mental abilities. Essentially, he was persuaded to volunteer as a human guinea pig and suffer a series of mental and physical trials throughout the world for the purpose of research. They hope to throw light on fresh ideas in developing science with the goal of expanding healthy lifespans. Production will begin soon. You've probably heard about the tech millionaires who are funding ambitious longevity studies. Larry Ellison, who has committed hundreds of millions of dollars in anti-aging research, and Alphabet's Larry Page, who has invested $1 billion in Calico, a mystery life extension business, are among them. And then there's PayPal founder and all-purpose dark overlord Peter Thiel, who is licking the blood from the necks of, wait, no, that's not quite clear. He has, however, indicated an interest in parabiosis, which entails receiving blood transfusions from young individuals. It's hardly unexpected that the IT sector is interested in immortality. Conquering death would be the ultimate holy grail of disruption, as well as a fantastic new business opportunity. However, in this scenario, the interest is likely to be more than simply intellectual and commercial. Accessing eternity, or anything close to it, would be the ultimate act of self-promotion, perpetual proof of one's ingenuity and excellence. That's why, understandably, the majority of the ink devoted to the quest for eternal life has focused on the science and the personalities behind it, the supercharged funding that has come from people who have made their fortunes making software and who seem to believe aging is a code that can be cracked. But little has been written on the ramifications of these billionaires, let's call them the centennials, actually succeeding in pushing themselves and their rich pals into the three-digit club. To put this in context, current predictions place the average lifetime for someone born in 2050 in the high 80s or early 90s, a nice little bump thanks to modest advances in research and disease targeting. Those pursuing ambitious lifetime projects, on the other hand, believe we can go far higher, with some scientists claiming an absolute upper limit for the human body and others claiming there's no reason we can't reach 1000. Already, there is a roughly 20-year longevity discrepancy in the United States between different socioeconomic groupings, with an average age of 66 in some of America's poorest regions compared to 87 in more affluent places. It's likely that by the end of the century, the disparity in life expectancy will have widened further as pricey developments in biotechnology, nanotechnology, robotics, and other fields become available only to the extremely wealthy. We've known for a long time that longevity is more than just the junction of good genes and healthy living. Affluence and environment also play key roles. The difference is that in the future, perhaps even more than now, a longer life may be something that can be purchased entirely. And what one person can have is sometimes wanted by many, what many desire is frequently a large market opportunity. To begin with, income disparity is expected to worsen. That's because death has historically been a big wealth redistributor. With no death to trigger a heavy inheritance tax, the centennials will amass even greater fortunes. Do you believe that wealth distribution is uneven today? Consider what that looks like when the affluent die far more slowly than the rest of the population and there is no capital tax to prevent them from collecting additional wealth. We shall live longer, not exponentially, but slowly, as a result of the centennials' dregs being dripped down and mass-marketed. 
And you can guarantee that the same business that wants to help us achieve immortality will have plenty of other services to sell us as we slowly make our approach to the cemetery. Imagine the tech sector delivering us drone-delivered medications, self-piloted land, air wheelchairs, and dentures that analyze the altering composition of saliva to notify us and our robot physicians to any concerning changes in our biome. We should expect to see some of these services before the end of the century. Of course, it has long been reported that an aging population will place enormous strain on societal infrastructure. Just consider the implications for the environment, transportation, healthcare, and the amount of space allotted to lengthy complaints in the letters to the editor section of the last remaining newspaper. However, age disparity has received less attention. While any talk about the future is sure to be hypothetical, the probable disparity in our death dates warrants additional consideration. A number of biotech startups are developing medications that target cell senescence, but Unity Biotechnology, based in South San Francisco, is the most advanced, with three therapies in clinical trials to treat aging disorders, beginning with osteoarthritis of the knee. Before coming public in 2018, Unity gathered more than $200 million from notable names like Thiel and Bezos, who contributed through their investment firms. Mellon has since purchased a modest share in the company. The development of a preventative treatment to wipe out senescent cells in the body before they produce aging diseases will be the holy grail of senolytics, theoretically expanding lifespan. In June, a team from Sloan Kettering Cancer Center reported groundbreaking findings demonstrating that CAR T cells, which are generally employed for precision cancer therapy, may also be used to target and destroy senescent cells. Prescription senolytics for anti-aging therapy are still years away, but there is an audience of longevity enthusiasts who want to access such anti-aging miracles right now, and there is no shortage of FDA-unapproved means to do so. For example, when a few studies looked at the senolytic effects of a chemotherapy drug called desatinib, the website fightaging.org produced a step-by-step -step guide to chemotherapeutic senolytic self-experimentation. This year, Restor Bio, a biotech firm spun out of the Swiss-based big pharma company Novartis in 2017, is expected to seek FDA approval for its Rapalog RTB101, which clinical trials have shown to slow age-related immune system decline and improve immune response in elderly people by more than 20%, a key factor in protecting vulnerable aging populations from disease. It is now being tested on older individuals in conjunction with COVID-19. If the FDA approves this medicine, they will have a product for individuals to use to prevent age-related disorders not only in our lifetimes, but in a few years. Medical discoveries are quite likely to result in significantly extended lifespans, and a significant proportion of the super-rich are investing significant money in discovering answers to death. In the meanwhile, people may frequently take efforts to boost their chances of living longer, healthier lives. Physicians such as Carlin and Friedman can contribute to this objective. So, what is your opinion on celebrities publicly admitting that they're investing and taking part in longevity studies? Do you think that their unfair advantage in both lifestyle capabilities and the monetary abilities to make us of it in the first place set a bad omen for the field of longevity? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.